Well, hey there, everybody. It is Embrace the Matrix. And I thought I would do something a little bit different with this video. And I'd do a little voiceover action. Um, not really sure if you guys prefer just to watch the videos and hear some music. Or would you like to hear my soothing voice tell you a little bit about this painting? <clears throat> so we're going to give this a shot. And if you don't like it, you can just leave a comment and tell me to keep my big mouth shut. You'd rather just sit back and watch the creation process uh, unfold. So, yeah, so as you can see, this is, um, this is a pretty large canvas. This is the largest canvas I've ever painted on. It's a 40 by 30 inch. Um, so it's, it's pretty big. Um, it's, uh, I believe it's 7 eighths inch thick. Um, it's not um, like a one and a quarter, which is what I certainly prefer with these large canvases, but I got a good deal on these real big ones, so I thought, what the hell, uh, we'll give it a shot. Uh, the only problem with, in my opinion, painting on these larger canvases is that unless you have a really good easel to hold it in place, um, you know, they can move around a lot. And unfortunately, my really good easel is sitting at a gallery um, right now with some of my other paintings. So uh, I probably won't uh, attempt another one of these large canvases until uh, I get my, uh, my really good easel back that clamps down canvases. So anyways, um, my initial idea for this um, creation was as far as colors, I tend to think in colors first. I, I tend to, um, before I really come up with any type of an idea or game plan, I always think of the colors first. Uh, I, I, so in this one, obviously, I was thinking green and black. Um, and like a lot of my paintings, um, I just, you know, I'm sometimes I have an idea and uh, well, a lot of times I should say I have an idea of where I want to go with it or at least start with it and then I just kind of let things take me where uh, you know where they go um, I, I really you know I might have an idea of like okay I want to have some really cool lines in this one or you know if I'm doing a lifelines painting um, which you can actually see one in the background there I'm working on. Um, you know, I know I'm going to be putting a lot of different kind of lines in. I know they're going to be lines, you know, but to what extent, I don't know. But with something like this, where I know I'm going to be pretty much putting a brush to uh, the canvas with paints, it's kind of, you know, I'm just kind of going with the flow. I really don't have a strategy, to be honest with you. I, I'm really... 100% flying by the seat of my pants. Um, you know, I uh, I tend to just pick colors that complement each other, and sometimes I, I really like to pick colors that uh, just completely clash with each other and, and and don't seem to make sense, but in the end they tend to make sense if you know what I'm talking about. Um, so at this point, as you can see, I've just kind of just gone a little crazy with some nice arches and arcs, uh, with the green and black and a darker green, um, primarily using golden paints on this one. Um, I got a real good deal at, um, Michael's on, uh, well, yeah, on, I got a good coupon, I should say. And so I bought a bunch of golden paints, which I've used in the past, but um, I'm starting to embrace the golden paints a little more now, and their uh, uh, you know their their brightness and real punch they have on a canvas. Um, so yeah, so this is primarily all golden, um, and of course I mix 95% of my paints with uh, gloss. Uh, gloss medium 
uh, I think I believe it's Liquitex or yeah, Liquitex gloss medium um, is usually what I mix uh, my paints with when I'm doing stuff like this. Um, if I'm trying to, if I'm trying to thin out paints, I'm certainly using a, a golden airbrush medium. But at this point, you know, I decided, you know, let's throw some yellow in here. Really, I had originally planned, the only thing I had planned on originally having with this one was green and black. I initially, you know, had it in my head that this was going to be nothing but green and black. That's it. Um, different shades of green, you know, maybe a few different shades of black, but definitely I wasn't going to uh, drift off the green and black. And of course, by the end, you'll see uh, I went against that and then some but again this is uh you know this tends to be my art it, it's very unpredictable um you know i usually just put on some music or you know i'll listen to podcasts and i just kind of go with the flow i don't uh, i try not to rush myself or anything oh of course at this point my camera went dead and uh, so I picked it up here, and not much has changed. You can see I had a little more red streak and some uh, some white uh, drips, I guess you could say, or you know, white streaks. But you really didn't miss much with that. Um, I'm usually running at least one camera, and I'm very a stickler for keeping batteries charged and stuff like that. So, um, but it happens. I got a couple cameras that tend to record for like 30 minutes and then shut off instead of just starting a new um, a new track um, of course here's I had a little idea just to throw um, little circles in there I tend to if, if you if you watched any of my videos and seen my paintings I tend to lean towards circles and lines um, so why you might be asking yourself well why Mr. Matrix I don't know I just I kind of like straight lines. Um, I like what you can do with uh, geometric type shapes. So I don't know circles and lines that seem to work well. Um, and of course you know it really wouldn't be an embrace the matrix painting without a little uh, little paint flinging. Um, I love and I think I've gotten really good at you know flinging paint on a canvas. I mean. It may sound silly, but I really think there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. Um, I, I've gotten a good, pretty good technique. Um, but of course, you know, a little palette knife action couldn't hurt things. You know, just when I think things are looking good, sometimes you just gotta grab a palette knife and look go a little crazy. Um, some some paintings I do with nothing but a palette knife, and I think those are some of the best ones. Uh, I've done but you know as you can see I've thrown some red in and everything else so I've completely veered off from the, my initial want to just keep it green and black um, of course I had some white uh, you know on the top left and I'm just you know kind of blending it down and in with the palette knife um, I, again I, when I'm when I'm doing a painting it's it's just it's kind of chaotic sometimes it's just uh you know i just kind of go with the flow i really don't put any restraint and sometimes they come out great sometimes not so great um i've gotten a lot of compliments on this one so i'm pretty pleased with it especially given that it's my uh, first large very large canvas and you know a little bit of green top it off with a little green uh, swipe and some uh, some splatters and pretty much call it done um, I, I generally when I'm done with a photo you'll see here I, I take some still photos while the paint's still wet and for some reason when you put them through on a you know YouTube they never come out that great you know they look good when I'm looking at them on my computer but you know, YouTube's when you tr upload it and tra it transfers. Sometimes they it loses some of the quality, but um, these photos always look great up close. I love looking at pictures of wet paint. Uh, it just it just seems to really pop and come alive. So um, I did that, and here's the final product. This is it. This is Severed Soul, 40 by 30 inch, made in the year 
2016. So I hope you enjoyed the voiceover and let me know below if you'd like me to make some more voiceovers with these paintings or uh, keep my mouth closed. Thanks for watching.